Lexical turbulence. All right, this is where we'll, I'll just talk about this for a few minutes. So this is a, this is a, actually, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. This is a paper that um, Eitan uh, you know, wrote for his, his thesis we put on the archive and went through a number of years of review sort of situation. And then I thought I'm going to fix this up. So I spent a day, this was last spring. So I'm just going to work, you know, get up in the morning. It's all I'm going to work on for the day. I kind of used to have to do that. Anyway, it turned into like a 30-day fugue state. Um, and I just worked really hard on this. So, uh, and, and up to, here's, here's what we'll quickly tell you about is that there's this paper from a few years ago that suggested that, according to Google Books, which we now have all these problems, this is the birth rate in these things. And it's dying. It seems to be that the language is cooling down. It's not, right? We're not getting new words. It's, it's, get, it's struggling. Uh, so the thing is, this was measured in a funny way. It's, so if a word is, goes above a, tw a twentieth of its, <laughs> if it's, if it's so you look across its time series, you find the median frequency of usage. And when it first goes above a twentieth of that median, and then when it last goes below a twentieth, that's when it's born and died. Ooh, it's really unsettling. And so it, it has some real problems. That's what it is. There, there it is, right? So this is when it's alive. So the idea is we want to know when a word is born and when it dies. So how do you do that, right? So when it was like, does, Google, does the word Google... So they're trying to do something like Google really takes off, but you don't want to say that it was born back there. So they're trying to account for like errors maybe. Okay, this is a lot of stuff. So here's the problem. If you use that uh, approach and you end history at 1860, or you end history here, end history here, end history. It looks like the birth rate is going down, birth rate is going down, because you're censusing it, because a word can kind of appear to have dropped and died, but it didn't really die. Uh, and if you t they did an extra thing, was they took out all words that appeared ugh, only in one year. If you put those back in, then, you, then that cleans it up. So that seemed to be sort of a funny thing that was going on. But on the other hand, death rates really, they have a censusing thing as well. It looks like they're dying, but if you really take, uh, you know, up to 2,000, it looks like words didn't really die off much, right? But so, so the end of history matters, and, and you can't have that, right? It can't matter. Is that, yeah? Okay. So this is a very detailed, ridiculous plot, and I, I, I can just tell you about that. So here's, a, here's an example. This is a word, ridiculous word. This is a chapter in capital letters. It looks like it's dead here. So we're going to put an end of history here based on its frequency of usage. It looks dead here because it's dropped below a 20th. Then it's alive again, and now it's dead again, and now it's alive again. And I did a little thing to search for really weird ones. So this one is dead, alive, dead, alive, dead, alive, dead, alive, dead, alive. Right? So if you put the end of history here, you would say it's dead. So that's not... So I mean, this is... I mean, I'm not trying to... They're good people. It's just like... It was a reasonable thing to do, but it has these problems, right? So... Um, I actually put, yes, here it is. Oh, I don't have it in there. Yeah, no, here it is, right? Uh, threshold for birth and death. We can see Chap appears to have run down the curtain in 1850, but then re-emerges alive. So there's a, uh, the, the Monty Python's parrot sketch, dead parrot sketch is in, uh, is, it's not there, is in the, is in the, it appears to have snuffed it. All right, so the idea was, well, let's not worry, like that's, it's just like whether they're really dead or alive is a problem. Let's look at flux. Let's look at them moving across frequencies of usage. And if you, so this is a zip floor for all these different decades. You can see it's basically unchanged. I do want to tell you this, it's unchanged. And if you look across these decades, you can see here's the, uh, if you take the top word, which turns out to be the comma, one gram, uh, it, it's just relatively frequent. It's becoming slightly less frequent, but it's pretty staple. The top 10, you know, they're the 10th words frequency of usage hasn't really changed much. You can see real stability over time. Right, so this isn't kind of moving around in a weird way. So what's happening though, of course the thing is churning and kind of came up with this idea of lexical turbulence. So that's what these things are. These are measures of flux of, across these different pieces. And so this is the the main story. So for words, so these are commonly, 
let me, this is rank, right? So these are uh, the, the commonly used words, the rare used words, rarely used words, and they have these different kind of slightly different scalings. Um, right, this is 1.23, 1.47. As you go up through rank, though, it's a super linear scaling, right? So that the flux across that boundary is going up and up and up and up, and then it even takes off. So there's a lot more churn for the rarer words. And so this, it's a scaling story, right? These are the very rare words. They flip like this, very rare words, very common words, so they have a story as well. Um, anyway, this, and this is upward flux, right? So these are, you can see the flux increases as the, uh, the words become rarer, and the same story here, that's the downward flux. So you have words that are falling over thresholds and going up. And then you can look at, and then you can look at things like this. You can see, quite, actually exhaustively, this is the gen, these are the things I showed you before, gen, um, JSD. This is all of them from the 1820s to 1830s, right? There's not, we're not cutting these off. These are the words that went in and out of the, um, uh, I think this is a point of uh, 10 to the minus 3 across that threshold. And, way, and, and for 10 to the minus 2, there are very few, the top 10. This is the top 100, right? So we see brackets have come into usage here. That looks like a bit sciencey. You know, this word disappeared. They kind of went, got a, dripped off, capital A. You know, so there's just these tiny sorts of details. Um, anyway, so you can go in, and this is at 10 to the minus 4, and I think... Right, so this is the 70s to 80s. So we're seeing names appear. Uh, KGB appears. So now we're looking at less common words. And so you start to see some interesting things. You see some sort of old bat, like King George has died, so it's falling out. Um, uh, you know, it's going further and further back. But I had some funny ones to show you, I think. Yeah, so again, this is Google Books. The fiction version, Kirk is here. Um, lots of swearing starts up. This is the 60s to the 70s. Um, we have, do I have another one? Maybe it's in the next one. Oh, that's 10 to the minus 6. Yeah, so I think it's here, right. So, Wharf, for example, right? Picard, TNG, the next generation. I mean, th these books are in this thing. They're, so you kind of look inside this Google Books thing, and laptop is here. Like, like laptop went up, but it's not as important as Picard. Very strange. Uh, I guess 1990s, sure, L laptops weren't as huge. Um, anyway, it, it's really fiction is sort of a funny thing. But I've, the big deal here was this lexical turbulence idea, this this way of quantifying this kind of churn in language because people say, oh, look, the ZIF distribution hasn't changed. But that's, of course, a very minimal thing. All right. Um, 